Welcome my friends. The very interesting and uh, important topic as such in the female genital system is the disorders of the uterine body as such, uterine corpus. So there are so many conditions like benign conditions, adenomyosis, then endometriosis and we have leomyomas and equally there are a good number of malignant conditions like leomyosarcomas and even the endometrial carcinomas. So let us have a look on this big entity, it's a vast subject as such, I will try to condense it in this particular video presentation. Let us have a look on the, all these uh, uh, entities. So what are the endometrial uh, pathological lesions as such? In endometrium, we will see the hyperplasia of the glands, we call it as endometrial hyperplasia. Again, there are so many types, simple hyperplasia, complex hyperplasia, we will see that endometrial carcinomas are there. Endometrial dysfunctional uterine bleeding, what we commonly refer it as DUB. Let us have a look on that also. And inflammatory conditions, again, mainly due to the infections like tubercular endometritis, again, very important cause for the infertility. And we have myometrial lesions like leomyomas, benign tumors, leomyosarcomas, rare tumors but highly malignant tumors. Then we have adenomyosis and we have even the uh, even endometriosis also. Yes, functional endometrial disorders. The definition goes like this. They are the uterine bleeding that occurs at an interval, irregular intervals in excessive uh, of the scant amounts, especially when prolonged. That means it is said to be dysfunctional whenever they are, there is no assignable causes. Once if you rule out the endometrial polyps or the endometrial carcinoma or pregnancy, then only you can call it as the dysfunctional uterine bleeding. So there should not be any underlying cause that is causing excessive bleeding. So then only you have to call it as dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Most important causes are usually functional uterine bleeding is seen because of the anovulatory cycles. But you have to think all these conditions as important causes for the dysfunctional uterine bleeding as such. So endometrial uh, uh, endocrine disorders like thyroid gland and pituitary uh, conditions like hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism and pituitary adenomas which are functional adenomas that can also cause the, the uterine bleeding. Primary lesions of the ovary. Most important is the polycystic ovarian disease where the patient will have a hyperestrogenic status and they can cause the, uh, the uterine bleeding. So tumors, mainly the estrogen secreting tumors, granulosa tumors are very important. Generalized metabolic disturbances like obesity, malnutrition and variety of chronic systemic disorders can also cause the endometrial bleeding. So failure of an ovulation as such it results in the excessive effect of the estrogen over the endometrial surface resulting in the bleeding. Let us have a look on what is this adenomyosis. It is defined as nests of the endometrial glands 2 to 3 millimeters beneath the endometrial surface. So that you have to see endometrial interface beneath that you have to see at least 2 to 3 millimeter beneath that particular surface. Microscopically, we will see this adenomyosis. It should be at least one low power field beneath the endometrial surface, endometrial interface. So at least one low power field. That means at 10x, if you see these uh, endometrial glands beneath uh, at least somewhere in the middle of the myometrium, then only you can call it as adenomyosis. What is the cause? Most of the time it is uh, unknown cause. And it is seen in uh, hysterectomy specimens very, very commonly. Around 15 to 20 percent of the uterus will show these adenomyosis. There will be, it produces enlargement of the myometrial wall, and the patient will clinically present as menorrhagia, excessive bleeding, and even chronic pelvic pain. Very classical appearance of the adenomyosis is like this. We call it as trabeculated appearance. So there are areas of hemorrhages. So whenever there is a menses, meantime, even this. Uh, the glands which are there in the myometrium, they also bleed and they cause extensive hemorrhage. So this is how, what is required to call it as adenomyosis, we should see the endometrial glands as well as stroma, endometrial stroma, accompanying the glands, the stroma should also accompany the glands. So it is the myometrium containing the endometrial glands. So it should be seen at least one low power field beneath the endometrial interface, then only you can call it as adenomyosis. The Endometriosis is same thing but it should be outside the uterus that is presence of endometrial glands and stroma in the abnormal locations like ovaries, uterine ligaments, rectovaginal septum, then pelvic peritoneum. So very very uh, rare sites also can be seen like even sometimes this particular endometrial gland seen very very commonly is in the 
over is sometimes they can be seen in the fallop and tube sometimes they can even to the broad ligament they can even go to the lungs they can even go to the peritoneum and the scars so there are so many hypotheses which have been covered how these endometrial glands and stoma will be seen at the different areas apart from the uterus as such so what are the hypotheses that are there for uh, endometriosis are retrograde menstruation through the fallop and tube that means whenever there is a menses the endometrial glands instead of getting discarded through the cervix sometimes they can uh, reflux back to the fallop and tube and then enter into the peritoneal cavity or it could be to the endometrial islands arising directly from the peritoneum so there can be a peritoneal uh, transylomic uh, cells which can even give rise to the endometrial glands they also think uh, whenever it goes to the lungs how it goes to the lungs probably it is a vascular or sometimes it could be lymphatic uh, dissemination of the endometrial gland so there are so many hypotheses and explanation regarding the how this endometriosis as such occurs these patients usually present with the infertility and uh, severe uh, pelvic pain whenever there is a menses so also these uh, ectopic sites they also shows the hemorrhage so that is the one which causes the pain in these patients so if it affects in the 10% of the women so what you have to see you have to see focaya of endometrial under the hormonal influences it also shows cyclic menstrual changes that you have to remember so whenever there is a menstrual bleeding so mean time these endometrial glands which are there outside the uterus that can also bleed what is the pathological criteria what you have to see we have to see at least endometrial glands endometrial stoma along with that whenever there is a hemorrhage so to engulf that particular rbcs we will see that macrophages will come and accumulate so hemosiderin laden macrophages are also seen in most of these uh, endometriosis areas so we have to see stroma as well as the glands both along with that hemosiderin laden macrophages at least two should be there out of these three most of the time we will see glands and stroma rarely we see the hemosiderin laden macrophages so with a excessive effect of estrogens there can be endometrial hyperplasia most of the time it is the unopposed uh, excessive stimulation of the endometrial endometrial glands by the estrogens so what are the causes for endometrial hyperplasia it could be due to the polycystic ovarian disease what we call it as pcods then functional functioning ovarian tumors main most important is the granulosa cell tumor sometimes even the various other tumors including uh, thicomas and even fibromas sertoli cell tumors ledig cell tumors so most importantly it is a granulosa cell tumor which is known for secreting excess amount of the estrogens so these patients will have a hyper estrogenic status and they can even suffer from variety of malignancies also first is the hyperplasia that can even turn into the malignancies there can be even a cortical stromal hyperplasia what i what i mean is the even uh, uh, adrenal cortex may show the hyperplastic excessive secretion of the estrogens and even sometimes prolonged estrogen therapy so it could be iatrogenic and it can also cause the endometrial hyperplasia so we classify it as low grade hyperplasias and high grade hyperplasias low grade hyperplasias again classified as simple and complex based on how these glands will appear under microscope simple simple uh, endometrial hyperplasia could be with itp or without itp without itp means we will look for the nuclear features if at all the nucleus is showing any marked uh, pleomorphism and uh, hyperchromatic nucleus prominent nucleoli we will use the word with itp similarly complex hyperplasia also we will see the complex papillary infoldings then if at all the nucleus is showing the nuclear anaplastic features like hyperchromatic nucleus prominent nucleoli marked in c ratio then we call it as complex hyperplasia with itp that is the one which poses the risk for development of the malignancies so again uh, the word term for the simple uh, hyperplasia without itp was the cystoglandular hyperplasia and we have now we use the word simple endometrial hyperplasia without itp complex hyperplasia can be adenomatous without itp or with itp so most of the time the low grade or the one which will have less than 5% of uh, chance of development of the endometrial carcinomas high grade hyperplasia are the one which will show the atp in the nucleus so they are called as atypical endometrial hyperplasia what is the problem they have high risk of development of the endometrial carcinoma so around 25% of these cases if you don't treat them at that particular interval there is a chance that these patients can develop the endometrial carcinomas so this is classical example of the endometrial hyperplasia you see that 
the glands and stoma are more showing uh, hyperplasia so there is cystic dilatation of the glands sometimes there can be accumulation of the mucin within the lumen of these uh, cystically dilated glands and there can be even cyst macrophages and even stoma is also hypercellular so this is uh, simple endometrial hyperplasia without nuclear atypia because at high power nucleus will not show any anaplasia features so the old terminology is the cgh cystoglandular hyperplasia we use the new term that is uh, simple endometrial hyperplasia without nuclear atypia if at all you don't treat these complex hyperplasias with nuclear atypia there is a very very high chance that these patients can develop the endometrial carcinoma so most important tumor again mainly due to the hyper estrogenic status is the endometrial carcinomas so let us have a look how these endometrial carcinomas will occur what are the risk factors and what we see microscopically and how to how to do the staging of the endometrial carcinomas the peak incidence is again in the elderly postmenopausal women especially around 55 or 65 years of age that is, that period risk factors you have to remember most important is again the hyper estrogenic status because of the you know nulli parity unopposed estrogen levels and even the carcinoma breast also having the same risk factors right hyper estrogenic status obesity diabetes patients are said to be having highest risk of development of the endometrial carcinomas sometimes patients who are hypertensive in them also the endometrial carcinoma is noted at a high incidence uh, single that means uh, again uh, unmarried then nulliparous women menstrual irregularities mainly hyperplasias mainly complex endometrial hyperplasias they are also imposes the risk of the development of the endometrial carcinomas remember endometrium whenever it is exposed to the prolonged estrogen stimulation there is very high chance that the hyperplasia can develop if there is a nuclear atypia endometrial carcinoma can also develop so it can be well differentiated and it can do have a better prognosis but it can be poorly differentiated and may carry worse prognosis so this is how classically endometroid type of endometrial carcinoma will appear so these abnormal uh, glands that means glands with all the features of uh, anaplasia they should show infiltration into the myometrium then only you can call it as endometrial carcinomas so how many how much it is infiltrating deep into the endo, uh, the uterus that is the one which will decide the staging is it uh, uh, involving the one third of the myometrium or two third of the myometrium or the entire myometrium is involved by this uh, endometrial carcinoma that is very important from pathology point of view so they will do the staging we call it as a figo staging of these uh, endometrial carcinomas if the stage 1 is the one where uh, tumor is confined to the uterine body fire survival rate is very very good if it is totally limited only to the body and involving only one third of the myometrium stage 2 is the one where <coughs> sorry stage 2 is the where a body and cervix are involved around 30 to 50% of the uh, fire survival rate in these cases stage 3 which will extend outside the uterus but not outside the true pelvis see the survival rate has come down almost to less than 20% stage 4 is the one which is very very bad extended outside the pelvis or sometimes involving the adjacent organs like bladder and the rectum so stage 4 will have very very grave prognosis so clinical outcome most of these patients may remain asymptomatic or they may have postmenopausal bleeding that you should warn the obstetrician that it may be a case of endometrial carcinoma so any postmenopausal bleeding should be uh, taken very seriously one should rule out these endometrial carcinomas sometimes they can also present to the liquorias so what uh, usually the obstetrician will do the they do the dilatation and curettage so it's simple very simple technique so under local anesthesia sometimes rarely under general anesthesia do the endometrial uh, dilatation and curettage send the endometrial sample for the histopathological examination in the formal insertion so we do the blocks and we will study this slides then we look for the nuclear uh, typical features so we study the endometrial glands and stoma if at all the nucleus is showing anaplasia features we warn the obstetrician that it could be a case of endometrial carcinoma so sometimes it will be very very clear cut under microscope that definitely it is endometrial carcinoma sometimes it could be even endometrial carcinoma in situ or complex endometrial hyperplasia that time further evaluation is the must to rule out or to confirm the endometrial carcinomas let us have the some of the myometrial 
tumors as such most importantly the leiomyomas very very common most common benign tumor in the female genital system as such around 25% of the women in their reproductive age they are going to develop the leiomyomas what is the common name fibroid uterus so surgical name we will use the word fibroid uterus common in the black population all are because of the again uh, estrogen responsive and high, hyper estrogenic status again can cause the leiomyomas and as they are responding for the estrogen levels as females will attain menopause so they can even regress sometimes even they can undergo calcification peculiarly in pregnancy they will undergo increase in the size we call this particular entity so leiomyomas in pregnancy they not only increases in uh, size they also undergo very peculiar change we call it as red degeneration of the fibroids so that is again very common in the pregnancy in most of the cases the cause may not be known so depending on the site we call we will uh, classify them as uh, you know if if they are in the myometrium most of the time they are in the myometrium and rarely they can be even in the uterine uh, ligaments or in the cervix this is the one what you have to remember intramural submucosal subserosal and parasitic have a look on this diagram here so the uh, submucosal are the one which are very near to the endometrial uh, lining as such so whenever they are near to the endometrial lining so they increases the surface area of the endometrium they are the one which are the problematic cases so the submucosal are the one which causes excessive bleeding menorrhagia is very very common in these patients most of the time we see them as intramural intramural within the myometrial uh, smooth muscle bundles this smooth muscle tumor will be there so it will be almost you know it will have a fibrous capsule it will be almost uh, embedded in the smooth muscle bundles of the myometrium sometimes they can be subserosal sometimes they can be within the peritoneal cavity we call it as parasitic leiomyomas or wandering leiomyomas so they are the few types of the leiomyomas rarely they can be cervical fibroids sometimes these fibroids can protrude through the os as polypedal structures so they are called as leiomyomatous polyps leiomyomatous polyps this is a very classical appearance of the leiomyoma cut section of the leiomyoma so one huge uh, intramural fibroid is there even it is compressing the endometrial cavity so see the cut appearance we call it as oral appearance no here is a hemorrhage or necrosis this is oral appearance it will be totally fibrotic and it gives a lot of resistance for cutting while cutting so this is sometimes there can be uterus can be so much distorted by these leiomyomas and there can be multiple leiomyomas if there are multiple leiomyomas we will use the word leiomyomata leiomyomata is the word we will use for the multiple leiomyomas so morphologically they are very much uh, sharply circumscribed discrete masses firm to hard in consistency sometimes they can even undergo various degenerative changes like uh, mixo degeneration there can be plenty of fibrosis there can be even calcification rarely and they are appears round and gray white we call it as oral appearance cut section we call it as oral appearance of the fibroids so, and they can be yellow brown or sometimes red degeneration is mainly seen in the pregnancy microscopically you have to remember they consist of oral soft bundles of smooth muscle cells they have a peculiar uh, nucleus so we call it as cigar shaped nucleus it is something oval to elongated nucleus with uniform size and shape and they have a long slender bipolar cytoplasmic processes no mitosis are very very rare mitosis if at all you see mitosis they are bipolar mitosis which are normal so this is classical appearance of the leiomyoma you see that this is a smooth muscle bundles of the myometrium and here is a well circumscribed mass here so this entire thing is the leiomyoma so this is appearance so we call it as whorls of uh, smooth muscle bundles or intersecting bundles or fascicles we use so many words so this is how some are in the transverse section some are in the vertical section so you can see the nucleus like this or it may be elongated like this so this is cigar bundle appearance cigar bundle appearance what we call elongated nucleus so something to represent diagrammatically it is something like this so cigar shaped uh, nucleus with a very small tiny nucleus no features of anaplasia no mitotic figures so they these cells are arranged in the intersecting bundles or whorls 
or fascicles and they have a thick fibrous stroma, fibrocollagenous stroma. So this stroma can show sometimes degenerative changes, plenty of degenerative changes can be seen. Mainly it is a hyaline degeneration which is very very common. Sometimes even lipomatous degeneration can be seen, calcification can be seen. So a variety of degenerative changes have been described in the leomyomas. So diagrammatical representation of the scene, this is hyaline degenerative changes. So the cells have a classical cigar shaped nucleus. Some are vertically cut bundles like this. So this arrangement intersecting bundles are of a cycles or a whorls. So this is how it is appears. So they may remain asymptomatic and patient may not come to know that she might be having fibroids. The one which are eroding the endometrial surface, they can cause abnormal bleeding. Menorrhagia is very, very common with the submucosal leomyomas. They can also compress the bladder and patient can have a urinary symptoms. And if a patient is, again, the submucosal leomyomas are the one which can even cause the infertility problem or they can hamper the implantation of the uh, fertilized uh, egg and they can even cause the abortions. Fetal malpresentations are uh, again common. Cervical fibroids are the one which will again cause the you know problem with the delivery. Uterine inertia can occur. Bleeding is again important complication. So it all depends uh, where the fibroid is located, what is the size of a fibroid and various factors will influence the outcome. So malignant counterpart of a leomyoma is the leomyosarcoma. Again, very, very highly aggressive tumor. So it is uncommon tumor as such and it is arises de novo. Don't think that uh, leomyoma, if not treated, will go for leomyosarcoma. Most of the time, it doesn't happen like that. Leomyosarcomas are de novo in origin. That means they will not preceded by leomyomas. Most of the time, the leomyomas will remain as leomyomas. Leomyosarcomas arises de novo. That means without a pre precursor of leomyoma, leomyosarcomas occurs de novo. That's the point you have to remember. Grassley, they appear as a huge bulky polypoidal masses and classically they will have a fleshy appearance. A lot of areas of hemorrhage and necrosis can be seen and they will invade the uterus. So they can be well differentiated or anaplastic. It all depends on the mitotic figures. So one has to see mitotic figures to call it as leomyosarcomas. So the mitosis, if it is more than 10 mitosis per 10 hypower field, it is again an anaplastic tumor. If it is around 5 mitosis per 10 hypower field, it is a quite well differentiated uh, uh, tumor. So we always count the uh, mitotic figures. We also look for the areas of extensive areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. So have a classical appearance here. A lot of features of anaplasia, all features of anaplasia are there. Marked pleomorphism, hyperchromatic nucleus, very, very prominent multiple nucleoli, increased density ratio, tumor giant cell formation, abnormal mitotic figures, tripolar mitotic figures. So if all these features are there, then only it's a leomyosarcoma. So to diagrammatically represent here, so all these cells will show marked degree of pleomorphism. As the name itself, sarcoma, most of these uh, Tumors are spindle shaped cells will be there and they show marked degree of anaplasia including my, uh, multiple uh, multipolar mitotic figures, bizarre appearing tumor giant cells, high mitotic activity, extensive errors of hemorrhage and necrosis. So all these criteria we will take into account then only we call it as leomyosarcomas and we will call it as well differentiated, moderately differentiated, highly dif uh, very undifferentiated that is anaplastic uh, uh, type so it all depends on the number of mitotic figures and these hemorrhage and necrosis. So clinical features of the leomyosarcomas again uh, a peak incidence at the 40 to 60 years. Even if you treat once, there is a chance that they can recur and uh, they are very much known for spread uh, through the abdomen. So hysterectomy is most of the time the treatment of choice for these uh, leomyosarcomas. But you have to look also for preoperatively and uh, postoperatively. You have to be careful about the hematogenous spread of these sarcomas because you know sarcomas are known for spread to the lungs. So you have to take preoperatively the lung. If you see cannonball appearance in the lung, it indicates that leomyosarcoma is already metastasized to the lungs. They can also spread to the bones and even to the brain. So five-year survival rate is not so good actually, around 40%. If they are anaplastic, it can be just around 5, 10 to 15%.
That's about the leomyosarcomas. sarcomas. Read extensively about the endometrial carcinomas, the subtypes, histological types, and what factors and the staging of these leomyosarcomas sarcomas as well as the endometrial carcinomas. So a lot of questions are expected from this particular topic. More than that, it's not only from exam point of view. You will see if patients, plenty of patients, you will come across these, especially leomyomas, really the endometrial hyperplasias, endometrial carcinomas, and, and leomyosarcomas, sarcomas, who will present to you, to your clinic with a excessive menstrual bleeding. Thank you.